Felix Lehr hier, Fortumann Synthesizers. And uh, ever since I invested in my beloved Buchla ESO command a couple of months ago, um, one of the most common questions that I keep getting asked is whether there's any sort of budget alternative when it comes to the West Coast type synthesis. And while I'm still waiting for the full release of the Tip Top Audio uh, Buchla collaboration for the Eurorack modules, I first wanted to check out this little thing which is the Cork Volca Modular. And as you can see, as all of the Volcas, it's tiny and relatively inexpensive, especially compared to the Buchler Easel. Uh, but there's a lot of similarities here, like wave folding, dual low pass gate, a reverb that sounds kind of spring reverb-ish, and um, also the, even the color scheme here on the keyboard. So this is definitely aiming to be a tiny music easel, and I was super excited uh, yeah, to check it out and to see whether this amounts to anything more than a toy. So. Let's get into it and see how it actually also stacks up against my real easel command. All right, so here we are with the Cork Volca Modular. And uh, as some of you might know, this is a semi-modular synth, meaning that we don't have to patch it in order to produce a sound. In case I actually open up the low pass gate. Then we are going to hear sound. Exactly. All right, if we wanted to understand the internal patch, what we could do is just follow this white line that you can see here because this is actually the signal flow. We start out with the source, which is an oscillator, going all the way here into the low pass gate, which, as the West Coast nerds amongst you will know, is a mixture basically of a low pass filter and a volume control. So it's not just a low pass filter, but at the same time you open it up, the volume increases. And as you can see, there's a second white line here coming from this uh, attack release envelope, which here is called a function, into the low pass gate, meaning this uh, envelope will basically act as a filter and amp envelope at the same time. So here's our release. And attack. nothing special so far. And from there it goes here into this reverb, which sounds kind of like a spring reverb, which is something that you would also find on the easel. All right, and as you can see here, there's actually a second low pass gate. That's why it's called dual low pass gate. Um, but Right now, there's no signal coming uh, into the second low pass gate by default, but we could grab any signal and put it here into the input and then uh, this would enter the chain here and also go into the reverb. So let's have a listen at first to the source section here, the oscillator section basically, which um, in a dry state sounds like this. And here we can listen to the behavior of the low pass gate again as it opens and closes. And now for comparison we could actually um, have a listen at me doing the same thing on my easel. This is the pure wave. And this is the behavior of the low pass gate. Fairly similar so far. Anyways, up next, what do we have here on the Volca Modular? we can actually, in typical West Coast uh, style, we can actually fold the wave in on itself, creating harmonics as we fold it here. Making the sound brighter and more aggressive. And for comparison, let's hear the wave folding on the easel. I'd say even brighter and more aggressive. Returning to the Volca Modular, here we have an additional source to basically create harmonics and make the sound more complex. And that is a modulation oscillator in this case. Which effectively does analog frequency modulation. This poti here, the ratio of the modulation, it doesn't have any effect uh, in, as long as the modulation isn't engaged. So it does nothing, but once I start to engage the modulation, you 
can actually start to look for some interesting sweet spots here already. Yeah, now let's compare that to the easels modulation oscillator. some more possibilities because we can actually change the waveform. I'd say there's a little difference in the character of these two. Because they actually had to make some uh, choices here in minimizing this entire system to just these uh, three poties. But I think the choice that was made was actually great. Because I love pretty much every position of the poties here. Because just in the combination of the modulation and the ratio, there's, there are so many sweet spots hidden in there. Which might take you a bit longer to find on the modulation oscillator of the actual easel. And if we now combine it with the wave folding... Yeah, we can create extremely complex sounds with just these uh, three knobs, which is actually fairly impressive. Yeah, lovely. All right, what happens next? The signal goes into the low pass gate, as you already know, and uh, we can hear how the control signal from the function here, yeah, this envelope, um, yeah, affects the cutoff. And now it goes into the reverb. So let's also compare the reverb. Maybe let's first match up the sound again. So that's the reverb of the Volker Modular, which does sound like a spring reverb. But not perfectly authentic, if you ask me, but once we start to actually sequence stuff on here, it's going to sound pretty lovely. But now let's have a listen at the actual analog spring reverb of the ESO. This one goes to the easel, hands down. Much more beautiful reverb, even though I also like the reverb here, but it's just not as uh, organic, if you ask me. All right, so far for the comparison. From now on, let's focus on the Volker Modular. In case you're interested in the easel, um, I actually did a video comparing East Coast and West Coast synthesis some time ago, where I go really in-depth uh, on the easel command. So if you want to check that out later, um, feel free to do so. But for now, let's uh, maybe start sequencing something in here. Um, as usual for the Volker series basically you have a function key and um, basically whatever is written here is uh, what your possibilities are so if i for example wanted to change the scale i would hold the function key go to scale and now i can select from any of these for example let's listen to the japanese scale giving us different uh, intervals between the notes which now sounds like this Yeah, and now let's go back to the chromatic scale, which we are used to. Yeah, so um, this, I think, accounts for the fact that we don't uh, have unquantized control over the pitch as we do in the um, Buchla Music Easel and its five-step sequencer. 
uh, but at least we have a lot of different um, scales here and also the possibility for micro tuning as you can see here. Um, but for now let's just stick with creating a little sequence. For that we hold, for that uh, I'm gonna choose with the memory button basically a free slot here. This is now a pattern and what I want to do now is to create a five-step sequence because the easel also has a signature five-step sequencer. So I want to create a five-step sequence. So I go to function and active step which now shows me how many steps are in the sequence. As you can see right now it's 16. So I'm basically going to deactivate all of them except the first five. And now I'm going to enter the step record mode and uh, now just basically type in my sequence. Now let's see if it worked. Yes, now we have our five step sequence. Let me turn down the low pass gate and now we can actually start patching a bit. And the most fundamental thing to understand here is um, if you look closely, you're gonna see that here are a lot of patch points and they have actually two different colors. Some of these patch points like this one or these here or all of these, they have silver around them. And some of them actually are blue and all of the blue ones are actually outputs. So this, all of these blues like these ones, this one, this one, all of these, um, I can take a signal from there and then put it into any of the silver ones which are the inputs. And what I'm gonna do first, I think, is uh, basically what I always do first on the easel as well, is I go up here, which is the random voltage. This is basically sample and hold. On the Buchla uh, systems, it's called random voltage. And I'm gonna put it into the wave folding because I wanna randomize the folding of the wave. And now I have some organic randomness already. But now, because these cables are not stackable, I can't take this same randomness again and do something else. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually take it and put it into this uh, little section here, which allows me to take the signal and then double it. I put it in here and now I have the same signal twice. Once coming out of here and once coming out of here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take it now, put it in here, and now I still have another random signal. Beautiful. All right, up next I might wanna take uh, this other random voltage here, which I think isn't as closely tied to the individual steps of the sequencer. And maybe I'm gonna double that as well, so that I also have it twice. Might be smart. So now I can take the signal from here and maybe I might want to adjust the release time with it. So I'm going to take it and put it in here. As you can see, that's the input for the release. And now I have randomized release times wave folding status. And of course up here we can also change the clock. In this case, yeah, it basically determines the entire tempo of the sequence. And as you might have noticed, there's actually no MIDI input, 
which is unfortunate, but we have a CV input. So you could actually hook this up to a modular system and get any kind of CV signal in here, um, which you could then grab from here. And this way you could, of course, also, uh, yeah, determine uh, the sequence. So you wouldn't have to use the internal sequencer or the internal clock. You could just use uh, external CV for it, even though uh, MIDI jack would have been nice, but I guess uh, there just isn't any space for a MIDI cable in here, really. Before I get carried away, let's conclude. Is the Volker Modular a worthy substitution for a music easel? Well, obviously not a substitution maybe, um, but I'm actually fairly impressed, especially by the oscillator section. Um, I think actually the reverb is of course not as beautiful and as organic as an actual spring reverb, but you could theoretically just take this output here and send it through an actual spring, giving you a similar result. The oscillator, on the other hand, is actually pretty dope, uh, especially if you consider the price. This is maybe the cheapest way I can think of having like a complex oscillator type sound. And if you were just to hear this in a blind test, basically, you would never think of this as toyish or plasticky, because this is some really serious sound. And especially if you want to combine it with a CV in, I think uh, this is more than worth uh, its price, especially if you consider that for the money you would need to get a full music easel, including the keyboard, you could buy 24 of these. And I'm not so sure if the Buchla actually sounds 24 times better than the Volker Modular. So, you decide. All right, that's it from my side for today. In case you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you ASAP. And apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.